Hello everyone, I K here. It's been on a bit of a long time no see because my school has been keeping me busy. Because you guys seem to enjoy my Debian XFC setup video last year. I mean it's racked up 3.9 thousand views. Today I'm talking about no. Now unlike XFC, GNOME is a very tight knit and well integrated experience with all the apps following a common design style. But that also means the GNOME is far more difficult to customize as much as what XFC or KDE for example might offer. GNOME's approach towards making a desktop environment seem to be we are making something we like, if you like it good, if you don't, we don't care. The thing is that this generally seems to be working. GNOME is currently one of the most polished and well integrated desktop environments present and it has a huge community of people who like it. I myself really like its workflow and don't really do that many changes to the default settings. Oh and by the way I am using the default GNOME installation on Debian using the GNOME meta package as a reference for the default installation. So today I am going to be talking about stepping up your GNOME. The first thing you should know about GNOME is that it really, really doesn't want you to customize the desktop beyond the background image. So installing plugins called GNOME extensions on it is not nearly as easy as it could be. You need to install a package name Chrome GNOME Shell and a browser extension which only works on a distro's version of Firefox or Chromium, so no Flatpak or even GNOME's own browser which is Epiphany. And then you need to install them from the GNOME extensions website. This situation has slightly improved due to a new app called Extension Manager which can be used to browse and install extensions. It is currently only available as a flat pack but you should be using flat pack anyways so that's not as big of a deal. You can see my Debian XFC video for information on flat pack and its installation. Once you install Extension Manager, installing extensions is as easy as searching for it in the browse tab and clicking install. These are the GNOME extensions I install without fail. Caffeine, which temporarily disables the screen saver and auto suspend, which is useful if you are giving presentations or reading really, really slowly. App indicator and case status notifier item support, oh, that was a mouthful, which sets up the system tray on the top bar for applications which use it, for example, OBS Studio. Sound input and output device chooser, which lets choose what input and output devices to use, which is really useful if you aren't an idiot and use the wrong mic anyway to record an entire video about installing the extension and then you have to do a voiceover for the entire thing. Some other extensions which you may like are Ding or Desktop Icons NG which brings back the desktop icons from the GNOME 2 days, Dash to Dock if you want a Mac OS like Dock to launch pinned or running applications, Dash to Panel if you like the Windows or KD Plasma style taskbar instead of the GNOME top bar, and Arc Menu which is a Windows-esque start menu for either the top bar or dash to panel. If you do go with the dash to panel and arc menu route, I recommend turning off the GNOME applications button in panel settings. Next up on my list is GNOME Tweaks, which is a software for changing several more GNOME settings, which are not available in the main settings app. I recommend you go through all its options for your perfect environment. But the ones which I use are background adjustment for setting the desktop background to be centered, tiled, zoom, etc. The lack of which in the main settings app is deeply confounding to me. And switching on the minimize and maximize button in window borders. The lack of which in the default configuration is a relic of the fact that GNOME wants to force its touch friendliness to desktop users because that went so well for Windows 8. Another neat thing you can do is add applications to start up by default each time you log in, which can be useful if you want to save that precious minute you would waste each time you open your computer for quickly joining that online meeting each morning. I don't know if this is something only I do, but I always wake up an average 5 minutes before my online classes start. The last thing which is a bit of an optional extra is you can set up Firefox to look like a traditional GNOME app like GNOME Web aka Epiphany using a Firefox CSS theme named Firefox GNOME. CSS themes are different from the traditional Firefox themes available on its add-ons website because they are installed manually on your profiles folder and are much more powerful than simply changing the background color to an image or something. 
I will leave a link in the description to its installation script, which has two versions for regular and flat pack Firefox respectively. Not that I encourage running random scripts of the internet, but I have looked into this one and it's fine. And that's it for this video. Please like, share and surprise to this video. And I will see you next time with what is hopefully the distro box video I have been wanting to make for some time now.